Hey, welcome back to my madness, 574 hours. What's been going on? Well, I've been doing probably one of my biggest hates is making brackets for things. So this heater system, which is the new sling heater system, doesn't have a lot of information about it. Anyhow, this is where I've set it up. So the um, splitter, I suppose you'd call it, or the manifold, I've just got it mounted here and I've put a bracket to mount it onto the firewall. From what I can see, their information, as scant as it is, doesn't really have any information as to how it mounts as opposed to just hanging on a, a piece of this, um, I don't even know what you'd call that, venture stuff. Um, I was going to use scat, but I've been asking for ages for it and it hasn't turned up, so I've used this now. And in actual fact, it's uh, paid off down further down in that mess down in there, which I'm tidying up, because I've had to squeeze it just a little bit and if it was scat, that would have been difficult. And the other bad thing about scat for down and around there is the spring being hardened tends to grind into things. As it's planned, whenever you turn the heat on, you get demissed. So didn't really want that. So we've added the valve that would have been on the front side of the firewall to here to turn it off. And down the front side, well, I think I've shown you all before anyhow, but uh, down in... And here on the other side, I've got a variable valve, so they can uh, vary the amount rather than being full on and full off. Some of the internal GPS antennas, we got more than we needed. So we thought, what the heck, might as well install them. So they're going to sit here. This one's for the prop controller. I haven't attached it to that yet quite clearly, just um, that needs to be sorted out. But since it's looking through fiberglass and windscreen, it should work just fine under there. And, and if I really need to get to it, I can. Haven't yet connected up the lane plugs just because they're life limited and they have to go on the log box. So I'm just leaving it off to make sure that I can wait till the absolutely last minute to plug them in and then add on the strain relief. And then shortly after that, we'll be putting the top cover on. So I want to make sure it's all tidy and everything's secure in there. But uh, as it stands, it, it's not quite there yet, but we're getting there. So 586 hours, it's been quite a week actually. Started off with a lot of small stuff just ticking along and most of it just up in the front part of the fuselage, but we've ended up with quite a bit of visual progress. So we got the forward part of the fuselage on, there was a little bit of work involved in that, just getting that straight. Had to do a little bit of laminating up underneath it in order to get it to fit how I want it to. So I've temporarily got the glare shield in place and this is an interesting little piece here. So in behind that needs to be painted black so you can't see the um, the top of the, oh, I don't know, what would you call that, the radio stack or whatever. But the interesting thing about that is, in behind there, it's supposed to have this piece of foam installed. So if that sat flush with the, the top of that panel in behind there, it's actually cutting off um, a fair amount of this demister slot. And this part here, actually wouldn't have any heat at all. It could actually even just push heat back down in behind the radios, which is kind of weird. So gonna have to do something different in there. I haven't had anybody talk about that, but it seems a very odd sort of way of doing things. So I guess I'll, I'll put some foam in there and then I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different in, in here in order to be able to block this piece off so I can still get hot air up through there. I don't know if what I just said makes any sense at all, but uh, we'll see as time goes on as to how I sort that out. I haven't figured it out myself just yet. What I've done here is added another plate in the back. There's just a little bit of primer on here at the moment, so it's a bit scruffy, but then I should be able to put the foam in behind it and that should allow to block off the, the mister and get some decent airflow up onto the windscreen. So hopefully that should do the trick. The other thing I've done out here, just got the cowl just sitting there at the moment, but because we haven't got the propeller and that won't be here for a while, I've made a jig to space the, the cowl the correct distance out from the prop flange and also just to get it in the right position. So there's a lot of cutting to go on with that. We look back here, that's an incredible amount. So there's sort of like 100 millimeters to cut up around here. So that's just gonna obviously be done a little bit at a time until that fits. So that's uh, a bit nerve wracking that bit. So 590 hours, time's just been flying by. Done a little bit inside, I think we showed you that in the last one, so we'll just go forward and have a look. 
So I've got some switches in the panel now. I've got a little bit more wiring to do there just to uh, connect in some heavier wires that I've got going to the pumps and the lane switches. The switches themselves had le have legends on them so they don't need any engraving but there's a little bit going on for the lane switches and the light so uh, we'll show that all in due course but that's where we're at with that but we have uh, had Harry sitting in there and playing Captain Harry. Brr, brr, brr. To the in that unenviable task of uh, trimming the cowling to fit, the way that sling do it, say to uh, match the, the top and the bottom cowling and click it all in place before you put it onto the fuselage. Problem I have with that is that there's quite a bit that needs to come off here and so I don't know how you're really supposed to judge the height of it at that point. So I don't think I'm going to do it quite the same way. So what I did do is uh, put the top cowling on um, up against here and then put on a piece of um, a jig material here to represent the spinner since we don't have it. Um, and I just trimmed it just along the, the front here just to get that um, about right here and I just measured um, from this point on both, on both sides down to I think it was this, these points here. Difficult to be perfectly accurate, but pretty close. So I've trimmed that, but everything else after that seems to me that if I followed down this line and had them too close together, I'd regret it. So I'm not going to do that. So on here, on the fuselage, what I did is I've measured back from the lip here, 100 millimeters, drawn a couple of marks, and then measured forward 80 to here. So that should give me a 20 millimeter lip on there so I can just rough this out and then I'll do the, the tape trick but uh, that'll get me close because there's a mass to cut off there at the moment so it's uh, a little bit intimidating actually but uh, we'll crack on. Okay so now I've trimmed that down as I had um, so that gives me something that's a lot easier to deal with again of course just making sure it's up against the jig where I need it. Another bit of how, about how I've set this up It'd be nice to be able to just sort of look at the distance between this camlock hole and the edge of the cowl, but unfortunately these are very rough cuts on the cowling, and so I don't think either side's the same. So that one's sort of gone through there. So what I did is I've measured, there's kind of a, a dip here, you can actually see from an angle that sort of mould line through there. I've kind of carried that straight through and put a mark on the cowl there and I've done the same here and measured the center and then from the center up there between the the two doors on the canopy right through to my jig I've run a, a plumb line down through there so that's the center and I've got that laser line running all the way up through the middle um, it goes to show how this thing isn't really in the middle but it's not far off but then I can mark all this down through the center, down through here, and then hopefully each time I put it back, it'll go back into the same place. That should be about in the middle, and I can see here that it's kind of conforming to this curve reasonably well on both sides. I think that's probably about the intent of where it's supposed to sit. So I'm doing the tape trick now, which is just get a piece of wide tape, stick it on flush with where you need to cut the cowl to, then once you put the top cowl on, you line up the edge of the tape and put it, so that gives you a cutting line. Now of course, as you cut up here, and this drops down into the slot where it's supposed to, then this will actually kick this forward slightly. So it's important just to cut the top piece first and get that seating down. And as you sort of progress along, that'll sort of slowly get into the right spot. It's a bit nerve wracking, but uh, you know, there it is, and again, it's best to cut it and then file it or sand it to where you need it to be as opposed to try and cut up right up to the line. So that's sort of, as we move along, you can see I've, I've got that sort of fitting tight along there, which is no good in itself because I've got to make room for paint in here and this is going to be something that comes off and goes on reasonably regularly with maintenance, so we don't want to be chipping paint and scraping everything so I really would need about a millimetre to a millimetre and a half gap sort of in here which I'll do once I've got it 
to fit. You have noticed, see how that's sitting proud, high, difficult to see it from there. Um, but this is high, I can actually press it down a bit and it's because the thickness of the cowl here and the thickness of the cowl here is different. This is thicker than here. So I'm going to need, and, it, and it's happening around here too, you can kind of see where it sort of sits proud, although I can push that in a little bit. It's sitting proud because it's not an even thickness, so I'm going to need to get it under there with the wheel and grind it down a bit so I get the right thickness. Well, I'll have to be careful because here it's actually not actually thick enough just there. So this bit is actually going to need to be built up slightly. So it's going to be tricky trying to figure out just to get the right height. And so down here, I can't really continue cutting that until I get this height thing sorted out because otherwise, if I cut that to match, when when it moves up here, this is going to move and it could move away from the, from the fuselage and make a bigger gap, which I don't want. In fact, it's easy to see the problem here when you turn it up the other way. There's a doubler in behind in behind here. You can see it in behind the laminations. So that um, looks like some kind of honeycomb thing or something. Don't know what that is exactly, but uh, obviously just a, a strengthening piece around the outside of that door. So that there needs to come back down a bit because it's quite thick just there. So if we look at the thickness of the skin normally, so that's showing, oh, it's hard with the light there, isn't it? 1.4 millimeters roughly. And when I go right down to there, that's just over four millimeters. I oh, will just call it four millimeters even. So there's, uh, that's got to come down to about half, just along to that line there, which is um, where the mount is, which is this piece here. And using the, same deal here, we'll just do a quick look at the depth and that's saying two point something. And so there it is a little bit further along, we've uh, managed to get that sort of fitting down through here. Um, still just a fraction proud there perhaps, a little bit of sanding to go but um, I've put in the first two cam lots just to hold it in the right spot and I noticed that just due to the shape of it, just sort of tends to spring back up just there which is really frustrating I'm not really sure what's causing that I'm going to have to come up with something else I may actually even put another cam lock just in here um, just to hold that down make it look a little bit better and you can actually see some of the thickness differences this cam lock's just sort of sitting proud about half a millimeter where this one here sort of sits flush so uh, it's just typical of the whole deal I think that one there is where it was a little bit thin, you can actually feel it a little bit low there, so I might be able to just put a little bit of fiberglass in behind there and lift it up. Other than that, um, it's actually come up quite well, so I'm relatively happy with it actually. So that was, uh, that was fun for the day. I took the afternoon off being Sunday and being totally sick of fiberglass dust. So there we go, 593 hours, it's been quite a week actually. Um, Yep, that's, that's Sunday done and dusted, so I'll get this video out and uh, tomorrow we'll crack on further.